Okay, so now we're actually gonna install the indicator into the main spindle and indicate the bore. We recommend that you use a good tenth indicator to do the final adjustments. Sometimes you wanna use a half tenth indicator to get started because if you're knocked way out, the travel is so much less. I've seen it where it actually pegs the needle one way or the other. But this should be pretty close to being right on. We're gonna go ahead and put this indicator in here. We like to use the interrepid indicator because it has a swivel on it. Also, you wanna have a rigid setup. You don't wanna have gravity influence any of your readings when you're doing this. Close the collet up. Now I'm gonna bring the indicator through. All right, so now we're gonna take the indicator and come to the bore. It's pretty sensitive, but now you'll see we have the indicator zeroed out. We're at the six o'clock position. Now we're gonna simply go around, check the alignment. We've moved to the nine o'clock position. We're a couple of tenths, that's good. Come around to the 12 o'clock position. And of course, I'm gonna need a mirror for that. That one's also about two tenths, which is excellent. Three o'clock position. Looks good. Back to zero. So that's right on, but hey, maybe I have my indicator pegged, so I like to take and grab it, move it. Nope, I've got travel on both sides. That was a good check. So that guy bushing housing is spot on, well within the 15 microns that the factory calls for. So if we found that this guide bushing housing was indeed off, you would have to remove this cover and underneath this cover, there's four bolts and this casting can be moved around. We'll actually insert a page from the parts manual that will illustrate this nicely. But that would be the procedure to bring this in. Simply take this cover off, loosen these bolts up, tap it around, get it in and then tighten them back down okay so now what we're going to do next we're going to go ahead and put the guide bushing housing back in the customer found that he had a brand new belt so we're going to replace the belt we're going to put that housing back in reassemble everything then we're going to take the perishable guide bushing out we're going to put our indicator in the sub spindle we're going to go ahead and check the alignment of the sub spindle to the guide bushing and then we're also going to rotate the guide bushing which will let us know how the guide bushing bearings are if they need to be replaced at some point. Okay, put the belt in. You should see it come through there. And that's good enough for now. There's your guide bushing housing. This is what your perishable guide bushing goes into. This is what supports your stock. It's driven by the main spindle by the belt that we took off and has bearings in it. It can be rebuilt. This one feels pretty good. Always like to wipe things off, make sure that we don't have any, any chips, any nicks on anything. We'll wipe this off, make sure there's no chips on it. It's good. Wipe that out. Let's go ahead and get that guide bushing housing in. And again, this is one of those things that it's a good fit. As long as I go in straight, it should go in with no problem. If I get it cocked, I'm gonna have to tap it around a little bit. Go ahead and set this in there. See if I can get it in there with one shot. What do you know? Like I've done it before. Then put the screws back in it. All right, that's in. Next thing we'll do is work on the belt. So we've got the belt on the pulley on the back of the guide bushing. Now we're gonna put it on the uh, drive pulley. Rotate it. Now it looks like it's on. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and pull this drive shaft back up against the stop bar that we talked about earlier. And again, this is why it's imperative. You don't move that stop bar. That's set to be straight. We're gonna go ahead and pull this right up against it. A couple of screws here, Allen screws. Okay, those are tight. Now we're gonna tighten up the jack shaft itself. Rotate, looks good. Okay, that's tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Snug those down a little bit. There's two more bolts that were right here. Now, if for some reason, the stop block got moved, we would have to place a mag, or mag base indicator on it, go ahead and get it straight again, and then pull the drive shaft up against it again. 
tension's good. That's where it was when we started. Everything looks good, no binding. So we're all, we're all set with this end of the machine. Now we'll move on to the other side. What we're doing right now, as I remove the guide bushing from the housing, the perishable, I'm actually gonna add a one inch sleeve with an ER16 collet so we can put our indicator in the subspindle and come up and check the guide bushing housing, the subspindle alignment to the guide bushing housing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna call the subspindle in line with the guide bushing. To do that, I'm gonna go to my preparation page. I'm gonna select T3000, which is the subspindle in line with the guide bushing. Turn my feed rate down. Just do a man set, doesn't matter. It's just whatever if on my core diameter, cycle start. Now I always do this with the feed rate down. On the Citizen, nothing's gonna move with the feed rate down. I can able to go up a little bit with my feed rate, make sure I don't have anything in the way or something's gonna happen I doesn't catch. Everything looks good. If, I, if there was something I didn't like, turn my feed rate down, stop right there. But we're okay, so we're gonna let it go all ahead and center line. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna put our indicator in there. We've got our ER16 in place. Nice rigid setup. It's very important that the setup you use on these alignments is rigid. You don't want any gravity to influence any of your height adjustments. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and jog this forward. I'm actually gonna take the indicator up to the taper where the guide bushing would sit. Take my feed rate down a little bit so I'm going a little slower. Indicator is zero. And it appears as though we're off a little bit side to side. I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way to the 12 o'clock position. We should be within a half a thou all the way around. And we're not. It appears as though this is off side to side. So we're off quite a bit, looks like. We zero it this way, and I come around here. Almost eight thou. Eight thou total indicator reading side to side. Okay, so we're gonna have to make an adjustment on the X2 axis. So we wanna go ahead and zero that axis out to make sure we're starting from its reference point. You don't want to make these adjustments and then find out the axis wasn't zero return, because in the event that you do zero return it and it wasn't in its proper position or picked up the last grid shift, it's going to screw everything up. And how we do this is you go to parameter. There's a menu selection called ZP Execute. You select the axis you want, which is going to be X2. You can do all the axes in one if you like. We're just going to do X2 right now. Press input to check the box, and then cycle start. You'll see the numbers are changing. The axis is now coming, well, it's actually zeroing out back on that side. So it's going back and forth. It's gonna zero out. It's gonna make a couple of hits. And the display reads complete zero return. So now we know we are, our zero return is completed. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna come up and check and see if we're zeroed on the guide bushing. Okay, so now we've brought the indicator up to the guide bushing taper. I'm gonna go ahead and zero it out away from me. Like that, I'm gonna roll it around. And it looks like I'm four, five, six and a half foul, side to side. Okay, so we've zeroed out the X2 slide. We've brought it forward. We've gone ahead and indicated the subspindle into the guide bushing. We noticed that our subspindle is off maybe six and a half, seven thou total indicator reading, which means it's about three thou off. We'll want to go ahead and bring that in. So the procedure in which we do that is we're actually going to do what we call a grid shift for the X2 axis. We always want a grid shift when we put T3000, which is a subspindle, in line with the guide bushing. So there's some things we have to do with the control. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna G50X0, which is a command to zero out 
the work position on X2 axis. That way, when we adjust the axis to bring our indicator to zero, we'll know precisely how much we changed it. So now we see our X2 is zero. Now if I go to jog and I move X2 axis, see my indicator moving now. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the three o'clock position. Grab my mirror. Zero my indicator out, come around here. Go half the distance to zero. Okay, I'm zero at three o'clock, I'm zero at nine o'clock. I look at my position data and I see I've moved 6.6,009 tenths, which means that's the amount that I have to change my grid shift. And that's gonna be an adjustment in the parameters. So we're gonna to go to parameters. We're gonna to go to absolute parameter for absolute machine position setting. And let me come out of here, kind of show you, go somewhere else first. So pr parameter, then you're gonna do menu select till you see absolute, which will be the parameters, which will be the far left bottom row. Press that one. This is where you're gonna find your grid shift for all the axes. We're gonna actually wanna do X2, which is right there. And right now, currently, the grid shift is 496.6085. That's actually millimeters. And the number we have is actually inches. So what we're gonna do is to convert our number to, it, to millimeters and either add or subtract from that number to bring our slide into zero. So what I like to do is always take a picture of this page before I start, because if you mess something up with the grid shift parameter, you can always go back to it. And we have a sheet that will be in a link in this video that explains how to do the grid shift. So our grid shift is off by 0.175 millimeters. Because our 6.9 is a diametrical value, we need to divide it by two because our grid shift is going to be radial. We have to change that number by 0.08763. The first thing we're going to do, you're going to press ab set one. That allows you to change that. If you don't do the ab set and put a one there, it's not going to let you change that value. It's always a crapshoot which way you go, and I'm going to add it, but first I'm going to take a picture because like I said, now I know where I started from. Let's add. So I'm going to add 496.6085. So now, this is my new grid shift number. Okay, now we're gonna power the machine off and re-zero it and do this check again. And hopefully we're right on the money or we're double the amount we were off before, which means we went the wrong way, which is 50-50 shot. Okay, so we're gonna re-zero out X2 axis after we've powered it down. Check the box, there it goes. Now this is gonna re-zero. Now I always like to power it down and do it one more time. Just to make sure it's picked up the grid. Older versions of the machine used to have to power down and power back up twice. Okay, one more time. Okay, that's zero. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jog it forward. And I went the wrong way with the grid. 50-50 shot. So now we have to redo that calculation we did before and put that in. So I can tell right now we're double what we were before. So we went the wrong way with the grid shift when we adjusted the absolute position parameter. I actually added the grid shift amount I needed to it when I should have subtracted it. I simply went back in 
reversed my calculation. I had taken a picture of my original grid shift, subtracted what I needed from that, checked it, put it in there and checked it. Now we're right on. So now we're gonna move on to other stations. For the rest of these alignments, we're not gonna have to do any grid shifts. What we've done by doing that grid shift is we set T3000 for the guide bushing. All these other adjustments will be made in what we call the hidden page, but it's simply a command in MDI G891. You run that little program and it opens up a hidden page. And I'll explain more on that. Well, that's the end of part two. Be sure to like us and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.